So Mark, did you see that video of the F1 official pulling up alongside the track, getting out, taking a piece of trash and just throwing it on the street? Is that a metaphor for what F1 has done to Las Vegas? <laughs> I know the video makes it look like he just got out of his car and like decided to throw trash, but I'm sure he's picking it up off the track. But why would you not just take it into the car with you? I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs>just in town for the race or you didn't go to the race but for race weekend and for pizza we ate so much pizza we went to some really cool bars some speakeasies all kinds of stuff we'll talk about some of it on the show you did a lot by yourself too which we will sprinkle in to shows coming up to kind of highlight some stuff but we ate a lot of pizza that was fun yeah it was uh i was excited for this it, you know i think we ended up going what did we go to eight we've been to many of the ones on the strip so we we didn't focus on that as much because of the race and the craziness of that. Plus we kind of knew where those would fall and, and we had experience with them. So it was cool to get outside the strip a bit. We went downtown, we did arts district, we did Summerlin. Uh, you know, I got to see the Summerlin downtown area, if you want to call it, it's a strip mall, but <laughs> am I going to upset people by saying that? I don't know. Uh, but that's what it is. You didn't even see the strip mall part of downtown Summerlin there. You saw the actual mall part. There is a strip yeah. mall part of it. Come on. Yeah. Well, I mean, an outdoor mall, not a strip mall outdoor mall but they call it a downtown i don't know but it was cool it was you know got to go to a couple new bars i'd never been to uh so i was excited for that and i even uh, ran into a viewer at the aria on sunday when i was uh, about to grab lunch before heading out and uh, we were talking a little bit about it and he was there in town until tuesday so i told him monday night i gave him the preview told him where the best place was to go hopefully he goes on uh went on monday night and got to taste it we did find the best pizza in las vegas and probably the best parking lot in las vegas or at least the best area that has the worst like, so parking much cool lot stuff. not the parking lot but <laughs> yeah the worst parking lot worst parking lot with the coolest stuff but we did find the best pizza that video is coming in the next couple weeks thanks to our buddy dave for joining us through all of it it was a great day lots of fun ended on the strip watching the f1 race from the escalators so that was all good too not my favorite experience <laughs> all right we'll talk about f1 later in the show but we have some other news the jason aldean's new restaurant over at 63 city center that's where the Harmon tower used to be right next to crystal's mall uh, he is building that i i feel like it's going to be a competitor to old red kind of a similar feel and vibe and they announced the opening date december 5th he talks about how the menu is going to have his grandma's meatloaf his mom's peach cobbler i don't know that sold me i want to try this now yeah, I just thought like this was, hey, Blake Shelton did it. Let's do it too. Uh, that's kind of the vibe I got from it. It sounds exactly like it. And I love that in the art, there's like a line of people trying to get in on a red carpet. I'm like, well, that's pretty, uh, that's a big ego there. But <laughs> you're, I think, think that's uh, great. 200, 200 people are going to be in line uh, to get into this place. And maybe that's the case, especially when it opens, I'm sure it will be, but yeah, it looks cool. Uh, definitely a good addition to that area. It just feels very similar to old red. And as Ricky Bobby said, if you're not first, you're last. So we'll have to see if it can take down Blake Shelton. And you can go there. You can go to Ross dress for less, get some clothes right after or before, <laughs> or while you're waiting in line, it all works out good. Yeah. We uh, made the joke that if you worked at Ross dress for less, uh, you got a pretty good view of the, the race. You could just like hang out after work. Yeah, there was so many people out there that were looking and they couldn't see anything and I didn't understand that. So part of your trip, you stayed at Nomad. So this is your goodbye to Nomad Las Vegas as Nomad is going away. We don't really know what the new name will be or if they will renovate it or just keep everything the same and with a new name. But Hilton bought Nomad Hotels and they said Nomad Las Vegas eventually going away. So this might be your last time of having a bathtub in your room. Yeah, it's still such a unique uh, experience. And it's like the old claw foot bathtub, which I think is cool, and not like a jetted jacuzzi type tub, which is what you probably see at most places. Uh, so I've always, it's always been interesting how the toilet, when you walk in the room, the toilet is way off to the right and the shower and the sink is way off to the left. We see rooms where the toilet is behind a door inside the bathroom, but I can't think of another room where they separate them out so much, uh, which is always kind of fun. That's interesting as well as the tub in the room, uh, definitely something unique to Vegas. And I still love it. It's so dark compared to everything else in Vegas, especially new stuff coming out like the lobby. It's very hard to see at first, like adjust to the light. And when I was checking in, there was like six or seven people in line, which was kind of surprising. It's one of the things I love about this hotel is there's usually never a line up at check-in. Only two agents working, but they got through it really quickly. Like within five minutes was up there, which is so much quicker than everywhere else. I thought that was cool. And I still love the layout of the room. It definitely gives you New York vibes. 
I do think the furniture is showing the wear, you know, brown sofa, all that stuff. I could see them coming in with new furniture, and I think it would be great if they just rehabbed it with furniture and, and kind of sparked it up a bit. Yeah, when I stayed last year, I noticed similar things. The furniture was starting to get scratched and worn, and it wasn't all good. And I do think the public areas are a little too dark there, especially like the hallways going to the yeah. rooms are so dark. Oh, my God. I love the rooms. I don't think they need to do much. Yeah, maybe replace some furniture, but hopefully they keep that overall design aesthetic because it is so unique to Las Vegas. Hopefully they keep the bathtubs in the rooms and the deconstructed bathroom is so unique, too. Uh, I, yeah, it's a weird thing, but I do like the room. I love staying there and yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I have to think there will be some changes there, but it is a cool hotel within a hotel experience. Park MGM smoke free. As you pointed out, when you walk in, you notice that you don't get uh, wafted with that smell of smoke. So a lot going into it. And it's much better than Park MGM's room. So if you're going to stay there, Nomad is the uh, go to. Yeah, it's probably my favorite of the hotels within a hotel in Vegas. Uh, I like it better than Four Seasons. I like it better than Nobu. Uh, and I, Although like the Nobu rooms are very nice, too. I just hate how hard it is to find that check in desk. And it just feels weird. It's like, here's a little pop up desk next to it, some elevators it doesn't feel exclusive in any way to that point so i think nomad does it best of them all and park mgm is it, you know it's got Italy and everything it's got a lot going for it smoke free maybe not quite the vibe that you get more towards the center of the strip but i think it does have some good things to offer the uh what is it primrose the breakfast place is really really good uh so it's got a lot going for it right there shout out to primrose i love that place every time i eat there great food and yeah just nomad is a great experience it's not pretentious in any way but it feels sort of fancy. You have your own areas if you want to sit and be quiet away from the casino. And uh, you have those nice rooms. So can't wait to see what they do next. Unfortunately, we have some interesting news that's Vegas related, although not directly here. Cirque is doing a lot of restructuring, including closing two uh, performances of the Blue Man Group, specifically the ones in New York and Chicago. And what's surprising about those is the New York one has been running 34 years. The Chicago one, 27 years. And remember Cirque bought Blue Man Group before the pandemic, and then they went through bankruptcy and they got sold off to their creditors. So this is a company in transition. Luxor is still home to Blue Man Group here for now. So we will see. Yeah, we've talked about this, uh, I think, in the last couple of months of how it's surprising that Blue Man, Man Group in Vegas is still ongoing. Nobody seems to talk about it, but they seem to still show, show, uh, sell show tickets. It's sad to see, you know, it's been such a long run uh, in New York. And I think this was like the start of that the whole company, you know, and it grew from there. So end of an era type of thing. But we've seen this with all of the Cirque shows. Like they've slowly been closing them down. I don't know what, what they're going to do with this company, how they're going to recreate it. Uh, but it definitely is on a downturn. So hopefully they can figure it out, get it back going. They put on such amazing shows that it's sad to see them continue to to struggle. As part of this announcement, they did say that they have new productions going in for touring of Cirque. So remember, they have shows all over the world. So they're not shutting down or you know running away. But it does seem like the Blue Man Group brand doesn't fit within what they want. And so, yeah, it, you almost wish that Blue Man Group was independent. But wishing the ones at Luxor the best and wishing the overall brand the best. As a reminder, we have our Patreon. $5 a month gives you access to our weekly after show, a lot of behind the channel. This week, we'll talk all behind our uh, pizza tour, all that good stuff. Patreon.com forward slash MTM Vegas for all the information. And thanks to everybody who supports us over there. So Mark, uh, when are you coming back to Vegas? Probably uh, spring would probably be the, the, be the best time I could do it. Uh, pretty booked up through the rest of the winter and early uh, next year. So that would be my guess. May ish. So when maybe <laughs> April. So we, so we don't have a date, but when Mark comes back, we are going to do a meetup. And so we are looking for venues. So throw suggestions in there. You're excited. We want to put a good meetup on for all of you guys. Whenever you come back, I haven't asked Mark if he wants to do a meetup, but I, I guess yeah, he's I saw yes, or else I'll cut I it saw, out. <laughs> I saw this on the show notes. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I thought we'd get ahead of it. Put it out there now. You know, let uh, yeah. people chime in. Maybe we'll get some suggestions and some help finding a venue. That's always been the I don't know the challenge for us in the amount of work on trying to find a place and you know, the back and forth with all of that. So maybe just putting it out there, people will help us set that up and uh, we can have a great meetup. So we'll see sometime in the spring, hopefully, but just wanted to yeah. let everybody know we want to meet them. I would love if uh, there's like somebody that owns a, a restaurant or a bar or manages it and, and wants to, you know, work with us on this. And we struggled so much before just trying to get like a space from like two to 4 p.m. on a Saturday when it's not super busy. And all we wanted was reserved area. 
and everybody wanted to throw out these minimums that were were high and everything, which kind of blew my mind. Um, so if you're willing to do something, let us know. Speaking of bars, we did a lot of bars this weekend. You did a lot of bars. So we thought we'd talk about some of them, the more unique, interesting ones, starting with that pirate bar in the Arts District. I didn't go, but you went with some friends on Friday night, had a great time. We talked about this when Josh and Rachel covered it in their video. And what did you think? Yeah, it's cool. I mean, uh, Arts District, uh, every time I go there, there's something new, something different. Uh, I, I feel like I just need to spend a whole day walking around down there and stumbling into places. It was cool. It was smaller, more low-key tiki bar type place. Uh, when you go to Golden Tiki, totally different level of things. So don't expect that if you've been there. But it, it does offer everything you want to see, like the atmosphere, the drinks, everything. The waitress hated me, so Sean would have loved that. He missed out on it. She She did not like any of what I was offering, so... <laughs> Beautiful. Mark knows I love that. Anytime he gets crap from a server, it is a beautiful thing. Yeah. It was just like I walked in and I said, hey, you know, uh, how was your painkiller here? And I, I don't think she realized I was talking about the drink. I don't know if she thought I was looking for other type of painkillers or what, but she was taking it back and she's like, I like it. I was like, oh, cool. I'll have one of those. And she's like, well, how about we wait for everybody else to look at the menu first? And I was like, oh, okay. So we're starting on that foot. I gotcha. <laughs> so Golden Tiki, we did that as well. They have an amazing happy hour, five to seven, with really great discounted drinks. I'll throw the happy hour menu up on the screen. Obviously, this place is pretty famous. It gets busier later at night, but we went during happy hour, and we were able to walk right in. Super nice security guard outside. The vibe in there is so cool. The bathrooms are something else. Yeah, it's a place everybody should go, and they do have an adult version of the Tiki Room. They have the Tikis come alive, the, the birds, just like the Tiki Room at Disneyland, but... Not quite the same uh, things coming yeah. out of their mouth. I think. I think yeah, if you uh, uh, are easily offended, you do not want to go to this place. Uh, I'll just tell you this. It's, it's The best way to describe it is it's the Tiki Bar from the 90s in 2024, which is awesome. Absolutely awesome. Also in that same parking lot is Mas Por Favor. We talked about this last year. There's Speakeasy there, but also the Nightmare Before Christmas overlay. And we were lucky enough to experience that. We showed up there. They have a happy hour going until 6. We showed up there right around six-ish, and the lady said if we didn't have reservations, it was standing room only, but she let us in, and then there was not that many people oh, back there, so I don't know what was yeah. going on. But the bartender was cool, you said, and got a couple drinks, and it's a really nice area to hang out. And the taco shop just looks like a taco shop. This is a real speakeasy because you really wouldn't know it existed. Even if you go to the bathrooms, which are down the same hallway of where the speakeasy is, you wouldn't immediately know that there was a speakeasy there and – yeah, I love it. This is another great place, and it's just, what, a few doors down from Golden Tiki? Yeah, definitely stop there, and it, it's an amazing little spot and unexpected. I don't even know if the tacos are good. I, that'd be even better if they are. Uh, but, yeah, the bartender, super nice. It was like 6.05 when we order our beers, and he's like, you know what? I'm going to put them in as happy hour, and it was 5 bucks a beer for a craft mango cart. So it was a really good deal, which – you know, blows your mind in Vegas to find anywhere that has a $5 craft on tap. Unheard of, especially in a speakeasy. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, it is, it's good stuff. Good stuff. Get off the strip. That's all we can say. That'll be the moral of our story of our video, I think. Also, there is another speakeasy that just opened. We didn't go to it, but Carrie Balicki did. And I thought it was worth highlighting because it's another cool one. The Mas Por Favor is behind a taco shop. This one behind an ice cream shop in the Craft Creamery in the Arts District. So I, I like that we're getting more speakeasies. I don't like the ones that are so obvious, but if you're going to hide it behind something and you're going to play the game with speakeasy stuff, I'm all for it. Yeah, I love the the fake mafia front type of thing, even though it's not fake. Like these are real, real things going on in the front and, and then the speakeasy. I think it's kind of cool. I guess this is the year of the speakeasy, man. I feel like over the last two years, we went from a couple in Vegas to now there's just like 20. Another thing in the Arts District, if you have not been to the Arts District, if you like bar hopping and checking out unique vibes and places, go. Like, I can't recommend it enough. My favorite area of Vegas by far. And Rebar, a shout out to them. We had some time out on their patio hanging out. Another great option in the Arts District. So, uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, all kinds of quirky, beautiful places, vintage clothes, tattoo parlors, cool bars, great restaurants, Esther's Kitchen, Casa Don Juan, many others. It's definitely a place. It should be top of anybody's list if you're a Vegas regular visitor and you've never been there. Yeah, we ate at Soul Belly, which felt very Nashville-like vibes. Uh, just a guy strumming a guitar, singing really good music, good barbecue, good food, good mac and cheese, all of that. Right next to Huddle Brewery. Like, there's so much there that you could spend several days there. Todd English Hotel, I still got to stay there. 
check it out. And Good Pie, we'll talk about that on the pizza video. Good Pie is there as well. So on to uh, some other stories. Rio is breaking the rules again with Hyatt. Rio has uh, integrated with Hyatt and they continue to be in that program and they continue to do all kinds of weird things. We talked previously how they were giving Hyatt elite members different breakfasts and they played all kinds of sort of games with this. And now they have a cyber sale that offers up to 50% off. And this is on their website. This is on Hyatt's website. And apparently if you book it, you're not getting credit for elite tiers or you're, you're getting any of the benefits. They don't disclose this until after you book. It's against the program terms. Dreamscape, we love what you're doing there. We wanna support you. We've given you so much coverage here. Stop this nonsense. If you wanna be part of Hyatt, then play by the rules. If you don't, then just be the Rio. And we all know how that's going to work out for you, because despite all the great things we've talked about, people still don't like the place. Yeah. And the, your locks on the door suck. No, they fix those. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, this is weird. I think it's like the Hyatt price. If you book it through Hyatt with the sale is like Gary found it at like $80. But if you booked it on Rio's site, it was $40. But they were they were saying they're going to re refuse to re waive the resort fee, which globalists of Hyatt are supposed to get unless you book it through Hyatt. So it's a game. I mean, this isn't totally out of the ordinary we see it with marriott and mgm you have to book through marriott's site to earn points and get credit so i could see maybe this ending up being that way where you have to start booking it through hyatt and you might see a little bit difference in price between the two things i mean i can't really think of another hyatt that works like this that it's you know has its own the hotel has its own program its own booking thing its own rewards program and then you also have hyatt so I could see them coming to agreement there right now. It doesn't seem like that's the rules and they should be playing by them, but maybe that's what they're working to is a similar setup that we see with Marriott and MGM. Baja Mar has a setup like that. So they have multiple hotels and they have their own program and, and everything else. Rio is not like Marriott because it is a Hyatt. Rio decided, Dreamscape decided that they would become a Hyatt and they get all the marketing stuff. And even if you book those cyber rates on Hyatt.com that are higher, according to Gary, you're not going to get credit or elite benefits. So how could you be booking directly with Hyatt and not get this stuff? I hope Rio reaches out and they clarify this stuff. I hope they fix it. Gary says that they hadn't responded to him and he's still waiting to hear back from Hyatt as well, but just do better. We want to support your property. Love everything that you've done with the changes so far. You still have a long way to go. And this isn't the way to get goodwill, unfortunately. This is more miles and points side of things, but this is a place a lot of Hyatt people are going to book because you can get elite nights at an affordable rate. And if you're not going to do that, then you're going to have a lot less booking. So either, you know, you want the bookings and it's profitable at those levels, or maybe they're thinking the Hyatt people aren't worth it. I don't know. Then withdraw from the program at that point. And just think, Dreamscape, if you can fill up all those cheap rooms for $20 in a few years when you sell the place, those occupancy rates will look a lot nicer. So there you go. Well, we're helping you out here. But uh, <laughs> another Rio-related story is the Chippendales are leaving the Rio after, I don't know, a crazy amount of years, they started there in 2001 and they are leaving the Rio. Now, of course, Rio was owned by Caesars and they are moving to Link, which is owned by Caesars. So it makes sense that maybe uh, contractually they just decided to go with the company they had worked with before. The first show at Link's Matt Franco Theater is on January 14th. I think their last show is at the end of the year. Anyway, uh, no more Chippendales at Rio, a big loss for them. Yeah, I'm surprised. Link feels like a weird fit for this a, a bit. Like, I think Link, may, maybe not. Maybe younger bachelorette parties go to Chippendales. I always feel like it's more like 30 to 40-year-old bachelorette parties versus, you know, Link is probably skewed towards like 21 to 28-year-olds. So I don't know. I feel like the demographic doesn't quite match up there. But, yeah, we were walking through Fremont Street uh, when we were doing the pizza stuff, hopping around, and we saw, like, their little tent on Fremont Street, and we all said, oh, we totally forgot that they had – a thing in Vegas still. So, you know, long run, kind of crazy to think about. What's really interesting is the gift shop at Chippendales. Uh, if you ever want to go in there, Mark likes to talk about the old adult store at the Flamingo that used to be there that closed. And we don't have those places anymore, but the gift shop for Chippendales exists. And uh, there's, <laughs> it's crazy. I, Vital Vegas posted about this many times ago, and then I learned about it, and then I went and saw it, and there's some wild stuff in the Chippendales gift shop. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Have you seen the the show on Netflix? I mean, or it's on Hulu, I think. We watched a couple of episodes. It's really interesting uh, how it all started and where it came from out of nowhere, and I don't know. I found it kind of, kind of interesting peep behind the scenes. So I guess we should talk about the elephant in the room, the F1 race that happened this week, the second annual Las Vegas GP you want to correct me yes we did have f1 in the early 80s so whatever it is the second race of this cycle and we know that we're going to have three there will be a third race next year 
for the contract. And that is going to happen November 20th through 22nd. So if you hate this race, if you hate everything about it, too bad, you're going to have it for at least another year. We'll talk later about whether it should go beyond that. But we were down on the strip for the race. We I walked it a little bit more than you did. You were tired, went back. But, you know, we kind of got to experience that whole trying to spot it from certain areas thing on the escalators Stupid. and stuff like that. It was, but it was kind of cool. You know, we were at the Harmon yeah. area, so it was very crowded and a lot of people and security guards screaming at everybody and people stopping and it was a mess. But when you get on those escalators, you can see a great view. On one side, you're seeing them come down. On the other side, you're seeing the corner. And it's kind of cool because they do slow down at that area because they have to turn. So they're not flying by you where you can't even see them. You can kind of see the cars. You can hear the cars. It's not so loud. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed being out there. It's crazy. Everybody's cramming, trying to do the same thing. And it just feels like a stampede risk type of experience at, at some points. Like one person tumbles and every chaos breaks out. So that's kind of the nerve wracking thing. If they would just open up some of the areas and let people stand around a little bit more, I think that would dissipate it. Even if they have like, they have like these wind shear black type things, you can still see through them a bit. So I don't even know what the real purpose is, but then they make these gate areas. So you can't stand there when there'd be plenty of space for people to hang out. And I think that would make the whole thing a bit better. Even if you left up the black stuff, I think people would stand there. Uh, but walking like on the bridges and everything got kind of clustered and people were trying to put uh, sticks above it to, to f film uh, selfie stick type things. And it was just kind of cra crazy. I didn't enjoy that aspect of it all. It was cool to see the cars for a bit. If I was going to go for F1 specifically, I would definitely get like one of the rooftop bar type tickets. Uh, that's the way to take it in. But I don't know. It's loud. I think it would be repetitive. And uh, but at least there you could go inside, grab a drink, get away from it, watch it on TV, come back out, witness it. I don't know. I could stand there for like three hours and watch it going by all, over and over again anyway. Yeah, a lot of uh, people enjoyed the race. A lot of people who went to the official ticketing stuff and they got food and drink and that was included as well. I agree with you. I would not be going to the strip to be watching from that spot for the entire race. It was more of a novelty to see the cars, watch a few laps, spend a few minutes in that area. I know that the area near Treasure Island in Spring Mountain, that was a lot. Those bridges were a lot less crowded according to the videos I saw. So maybe that's a better place to go. The best place, there was people that found this wall and they hopped on top of that uh, kind of over near Palazzo, which was cool to see. So, you know, people getting their, their thing on, even if they don't want to pay for the tickets. But I don't know, if you looked at social media, it was either dead all weekend or packed all weekend or, you know, it was successful or not successful. The attendance was up or I mean, it was slightly down or it was down a lot. I don't know. My takeaways are it was definitely less busy than a normal Saturday. And I saw people commenting on Twitter, this is the busiest I've ever seen Vegas. And then somebody responded, tell us that you've never seen Vegas busy without telling us. Yeah. This was not Super Bowl weekend. This was not F1 weekend last year. This was not CES week or any of those busy sort of weeks. It felt busy on Saturday night to me. But during the day, we were downtown. The festival didn't, I mean, there wasn't really much going on there. Even the strip during the day and stuff felt very empty. And at night, yeah, in those little areas where everybody's trying to see the cars, there was a lot of people. But even at MGM Grand, we parked there. There was no event pricing, so I could just use my locals three hours free. MGM Grand was sort of dead. So I don't know, mixed messages all over. Yeah, I think it really depends on where you're at. And I think that's the difference on this weekend is it's clustered more where if you go on a normal weekend, everybody's kind of spread out evenly around things. You, there'll be more people in Arts District. Uh, our buddy did go to the concerts on Fremont, and he said it was hard to, like, walk around once the concerts were in full swing at night. So I think that did really well, was busy. But during the day, yeah, it wasn't as busy. When you went up towards the race, it was, a you know, that was a cluster, and it was packed, and, and definitely you felt it there. But... You know, I think that's what depends. Like, did I think it was a worse experience than going any other weekend? I do think it was busier than it would have been just a normal November weekend before Thanksgiving. I think that's normally a pretty dead period. So I think F1 brings in more people than we would have seen there. But as far as, you know, if you're not staying in that area of where the race is, if you don't care about Bellagio, uh, you know, that type of thing, like if you don't want to be in that little pocket or walk through that pocket, it was a fun weekend. Like, if you're at Mandalay Bay, you're not even going to notice it's going on. It's probably going to be a little bit less busy. You can get into places easier. Uh, so I think it all depends on the way you look at it, the way you plan it, uh, you know, where you're going. If you're up at Resource World or Fountain Blue, I don't think you're going to notice it there either. It was really easy getting around in cars, you know, besides right before the race started, we were backed up on the one road, but we just went a little bit further away and got through into the MGM parking lot. No problem. A bit overblown. You don't get the same experience in the center of the strip. You can't see the fountain. You can't see any of that. So if that's important to you, stay away for the month. But if you, you know, you've seen and done that, 
and you're going to go other places around Vegas, I think it's, you know, it's fine. Yeah, so my takeaway, I mean, there's so many activations and interesting things. We saw the Aston Martin cars at Fountain Blue, and there was other cars, I think Bugatti's all over win, which we didn't get to go see, but there's just tons of stuff all over town. So you get that unique experience. And I think the event itself is fantastic all over the city. I don't think it's a bad thing. So I can both think it's a great event, and it's not the right event for the Las Vegas Strip. Uh, you talk about the way that they treat pedestrians, the way they put gates up to pen everybody together instead of letting people have space. They put blocks, you know, I get it that they put blocks on the pedestrian bridges, but they put them in places that you barely had a view and they blocked out places so that you didn't have a place to stand. This is very anti-spectator. It's a very, it's a sellout thing. And I don't even have a huge issue with that. The issue is the months before, the month after, what is the effect on that long-term for the city of Las Vegas? We'll do it three years. This breaks the strip in a way that doesn't need to happen for the city of Las Vegas. Maybe we got a few more tourists for a Saturday right before Thanksgiving. But again, it didn't feel even close to a busy, busy, busy Saturday night. And you could both have a great event and it not be the right event. Maybe they need to move it off the strip. Maybe they need to just take it to some of those back roads to still use the pit building and stuff. I've talked to so many people. I do not know a single person who supports this race. It's crazy. And yet it was a great event. Yeah, and I, you know, one of the reports we saw is that there's tons of cities that are lining up for this and it, it turns Vegas on to the international crowd. I, I think that's complete BS because when you travel anywhere internationally, Places that they want to talk about when you say you're from the U.S. are, you know, New York, L.A., and Vegas. Everybody knows Vegas. Everybody's seen it. They understand it. When they want to come to the U.S., Vegas is one of the places on their list that they want to go. I don't think you need any more exposure. Where maybe like in Austin, Texas, yeah, they could get some exposure. You know, people always want to talk about Texas, too, but they don't know any cities in Texas. They just want to talk about, you know, what happens in Texas and how crazy it is. When you look at it that way, I don't think Vegas needs it. I think Vegas could still have it and it not be on the strip. Maybe it wouldn't be as unique or it wouldn't be as cool, but I don't think people would fight it as much. So I think that's where it could go. You have the infrastructure to host it more so than most other cities. You know, you have the rooms, you have other things to draw people, the dining the gambling, all that stuff. I think people would still come even if it was off strip and would have a great time and it would, you know, it'd get more support that way. So I think that's kind of the the meet in the middle point. I don't think that they would do that, uh, but I think that's where the best outcome for everybody would be. I predict that we're going to have huge battles coming between the locals. I think that you still have businesses that didn't do well here and they're going to be fighting, but F1 does want to stay here. They announced Grand Prix Plaza opening next year. That's their opening of their pit building basically as a museum. So they'll have an F1 museum and a shop and then also a go-karting track there. So they're sort of doubling down saying this is going to be a permanent thing opening in 2025. You would expect then that the race would stay past that. But I don't see local government officials. They will lose their seats over this race. This is how unhappy people are here. I don't understand the, unha the level of unhappiness, but I don't have to drive over there all the time. And I don't know. I just tend to accept things for what they are. And again, I love the spectacle of it. I enjoyed being down there. So, you know, mixed messages here. We will see. But Grand Prix Plaza opening next year. F1 coming back next year. And beyond that, you know, Vegas was uh, on display. We should all celebrate that. The whole world watched again. It's a beautiful city. But I can imagine a race just off strip where you have the entire strip intact. That would be even better. Yeah. And we didn't even talk about the monorail and how much of a mess that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the monorail got its love this week, right? Lines everywhere. Yeah. I mean, it's time has come. Yeah, I, I paid for a ticket and I just said, you know what? Not, not waiting this line. It, it was crazy. It was at least an hour wait. Uh, I think after the race was like a 90 minute wait. We ended up flipping and switching and, and getting a lift, which got in and out perfectly fine. No traffic, no issue. And I think people bought the monorail tickets online because you have to buy them online now and bought it before they realized. And then just like sunk cost fallacy where they're like, I already spent my 13 bucks or my five bucks or whatever. So I'm going to do it. And we all just ate it and said, you know what? We are getting in a lift, which is a third the price of Uber. It's nuts. Don't you Uber is useless in Vegas now. And with that, we will end this show. I think this is the longest MTM Vegas episode ever by a decent margin. I don't know what it'll be when we edit it down, but I hope you enjoyed watching all this. Let us know what you think about F1, all the different stuff we talked about, the different bars that we went to, Nomad. Are you going to be sad to see that go? Everything we discussed in this super show, leave a comment. We do two shows a week, Tuesdays and Fridays, and we'll be back in a couple days with another show. Thanks so much for watching. If you're still here after all this time, thanks for watching it all the way through. Talk to you next time. Yeah, we got to give our shout out to the commenters next time because we couldn't fit it in this time. <laughs>